Thank you so much. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Edmund Hassan. Oh, okay, that's good. Right, uh, my name is Edmund Hassan. I'm from uh, Seda SME Bank. A little bit of an introduction before we start into our journey today. Um, so, um, I represent Seda, part of SME Bank, and uh, uh, we don't only do financing, we also do development for SMEs, and also for other businesses as well. So um, we try to help SMEs especially, and the reason why you're here is because we wanted to share some of our best practices and uh, to, to in order to take some climate action for your company. Okay, um, we not only train, but we also do um, uh, coaching as well. And part of the new, uh, the new modules that we have is uh, ESG and training in ESG. So, um, I know most of you have gone through one, two days before uh, in, in, in this hall, and uh, you heard about global climate change, you heard about um, rising sea levels, Malaysia being submerged in water and whatsoever, uh, rising temperatures and all of that. And of course, Bank Negara, and also Securities Commission, um, talk about ESG, climate risk, frameworks, yada, yada, yada. But what really matters is that for a lot of us here, you know, how does this impact my organization? All right. And then what should my organization do? How should I do this? And uh, are, this, are there initiatives, programs to help us to do this? So, now when we talk about climate change and uh, green whatsoever, does this impact Malaysia? The next question comes. The answer is yes. Some of us have already spoken about this uh, to the other sessions. Now when it comes to dollars and cents, this is what matters. This is just 2022. Not you know, the entire year, but this is just 2022. At the end of the day, it impacts your money. It impacts your organizational money and also um, your, even your own um, uh, dollars and cents yourself. So we talk about vehicles, we talk about business premises, we talk about uh, if you're in manufacturing, your, 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 your uh, establishment, you know, multiply this by a few times, by a few years, you, if, if, especially if you live in a flood prone area, so you get these losses year after year. So, and also because Malaysia is a contributory to, a uh, signatory to, to the Paris Agreement, um, we need to ensure that we have, we, we, we do our due diligence when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to uh, climate change actions. So um, what this means is basically, at the end of the day, your business is affected. Your business can be affected by this. And if you don't do you because there's supposed to be a stop take when it comes to global uh, greenhouse gas emissions need, needed to be done by, com by companies, uh, you, you need, this becomes an enabler to, to, to your trade and also in to ensure uh, that your, your company uh, have the ability to export. Okay, um, so I'm sure a lot of you have heard in the last two days um, on how important gr greenhouse, uh, 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 I mean, when it comes to a climate change issue. Uh, we have economic implication, global leadership and reputation, especially for our country, uh, and also about resilience uh, planning. When it comes to resilience planning, us, uh, for a lot of banks here, we, we need to ensure that 
the climate action risk is mitigated and uh, to ensure that we uh, all of our processes are, are shaped up towards reducing the risk against climate action. Now that means to ensure that the, the financing that we do, uh, the, the, the companies that we invest in, um, you know, uh, have little to no risk of, um, you know, due to flooding and all everything else. So, um, and I'm sure we, because we have, you know, don't have so much time. A lot of a lot of this have been outlined by other sessions before I did. So, uh, when uh, looking at climate action, we need to understand what the issue is. It's not a, a something that's going to be far in the future. As you saw in the previous slide, it's happening right now. Uh, so what we need to do is to find ways to mitigate and transition into renewable energy. Uh, we need to adapt. We also need to find ways, measures to, to, to ensure that our business is resilient against climate change. Uh, we need to also promote sustainable practices uh, youth empowerment, collaborative engagement, uh, corporate responsibility, and so uh, and also to do some just transition, and of course learn from our friends, whether it's local and also overseas. So, when when you talk about climate action, a lot I get this question a lot. What do we do? My organization. What should I do? You know, whether I'm, a, I'm, I'm small, in a small company or I'm a, a big company, um, you know, it's, it, everybody talk, talks about it. So what should I do? So first and foremost, measuring is very, very important. Measuring your greenhouse gas emissions starting from now. Before you even switch your light bulbs into LEDs and whatsoever, you need to measure how your, in, your, your consumption of energy your consumption of uh, and also your emissions for greenhouse gases. So these are the three steps. You start with measure, and then from your from measuring, you do all your reduction. Uh, you uh, you uh, you adapt and you do some resilience planning. Uh, you you do internal and public awareness and education. Now this is the part, the tricky part, especially if you work in a in a large organization, uh, sometimes public listed. Uh, it's very, very important to get your stakeholders buy in uh, when it comes to doing um, sustainability because at times it could even cost your career. All right? um, there has been, um, I've got some experience. Um, you know, when you talk about not being able to invest in a certain company that your, your, your board of directors tell you to do, right? Uh, there could it could be a cause of friction, so that is why um, it's very important to 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 get your stakeholders, both internal and external, to understand that uh, the sustainability sustainability journey is a business decision. It's not just something that you want to do because it's your it's your mina. Uh, you know, you know your, your passion or something like that, but it is something of a decision that is that affects the business as a whole. Uh, so um, um, it's also because it's an industrial responsibility. Because in order for your market to expand, we need to also tell our stakeholders. We need to also tell, you know, our um, our the, the the even our workforce that this is a requirement now for us to export especially if we want to export uh, and also um, to support renewable energy. Now, this is the part where it's a chicken and an egg situation. Uh, in Malaysia, we have this condition, we have this, this situation that um, our energy is subsidized. And because our energy is subsidized, there's little to no effort for the, a lot of public to go into renewable energies. But there are a few surprises that we notice. Um, there are even some game-changing developments. 
that we know that we know this. Um, we know with, when we talk about hydrogen, there's there's basically a two 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 ways of of of, of um, what I call two mazhab when it comes to 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 energy transition. One is through battery and power electricity, and the other one is through hydrogen. Uh, one is to look at you know whether the future goes into battery powered cars or the future goes into uh, hydrogen powered cars for an example um, but good thing is a lot of us I, I was quite surprised in my journey in the last few years is that we have enablers in both both of these uh, branches of uh, you know uh, uh, renewable energies uh, it's just that Within our our society, the adoption is so low that you you it's very hard for us to see that these are feasible options for our for our usage. So um, the more we learn, the more we look, and the more exposed we are with the options, you know, the, the more the the better you find the options out there. We even have I I have heard about this 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 company. Who who has came up with this battery made from plants? Uh, if you've heard of graphene, all right, which is three times better than any lithium-ion battery out there, including of Tesla's. So uh, it charges three times faster, it lasts longer, and things like that. And it's made in Malaysia. It's just that we don't have you know, the usage for it just yet and market access for it just yet. Uh, so at the end of the day, when you do your greenhouse gas emissions, you reduce it, you have to monitor, you have to also report on this progress progressively. So, and at times, reporting is more important than just certifications because I get this question a lot. Do I get logos? Do I get certifications better? Yes, it's good, but uh, what's better is if you can consistently do your reporting, especially on your greenhouse gas emission. So those are the two very important things to do. So when it comes to measuring emissions, we all know about you know, the, the, uh, the greenhouse gases, the carbon dioxide and whatsoever, but there's three scopes in case you haven't, uh, some of us don't know. Uh, the scope one, scope two, and scope three. Scope one means all your greenhouse emissions within your organization, uh, and also scope two is on, on, especially on your operations. But the trick, tricky part is the scope three. The scope three means that you have to do the greenhouse emissions from ev every bit of your supply chain, and that's the kicker. For most of the companies out there, even large companies like, 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 like Petronas, even companies like, like PNB and whatsoever, it's very hard to get your the smaller companies that supply to you to report greenhouse gas emission because they don't even know what ESG is. They don't even know carbon accounting, and for you to hire a consultant to do all the greenhouse gas emissions for for your entire scope three, that means you have to, if you have a hundred suppliers, you have to, it's almost like doing, you know, whatever that you pay that consultant is times a hundred. You have to do for every one of your customers, uh, of, your, of your supply chain. And that's very hard. But we have a solution. Okay? So, uh, which I'll tell you uh, in, a, in a bit towards the end. So, um, um, but before that, may I know how many of you work in, uh, uh, are, are there any SMEs here? No, a lot of you work in large banks here? Banks? Public listed companies? Yes, I'll see one public listed company. Okay, good. So. That's the understanding here. Um, so what do we do some for, some for climate risk? First, first, we have to look at climate risk. Uh, 
climate related risk a scenario we have to do scenario analysis especially when it comes to different uh, uh, climate um, uh, scenarios whether it's here in Malaysia it's basically a lot of it has to do with just uh, flood and uh, as, uh, earthquake in case it have uh, earthquakes not a, but then again it's considered a catastrophe but in case of earthquakes but floods is mostly the, the scenario planning lah. Uh, uh, apart from that, uh, you know, any other uh, uh, typhoons is un highly unlikely. But but um, for us to draft up all these these scenarios mean that we know how to expect the how to mitigate and also take action when it happens. Uh, disclosure of fine uh, climate related information. Now for us banks, it's very important. Uh, to, 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 to first of all screen all the investments that we have because under TCFD we also have to report uh, who we give financing to whether it's related to climate risk uh, task force for climate uh, related uh, risk disclosure so um, we have a checklist that we work together with Bank Negara uh, and GC3 so from there, we develop that checklist to ensure that the people that we give financing to has minimal uh, to has minimal risk when it comes to to to, to climate risk, especially industries related to mining, industries related to agriculture at times, especially when it comes to deforestation. Um, so we need to look at those checklists, make those checklists, and ensure that these are companies that that we can. Uh, these are companies that we can give financing to that 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 gives us uh, the the least risk uh, as much and also to ensure that especially you know when we give financing to SMEs uh, uh, there are SMEs there are shops there are that that resides on 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 uh, flood prone, prone areas so uh, these are some of the things that we also have to take into consideration uh, whether um, if you want to build a, a manufacturing plant uh, you need to uh, ensure that if it's on a on a flood prone area you you raise the grounds or do whatever measures necessary to to ensure there's minimal loss uh, when uh, if there are uh, you know um, um, floods coming so this is what uh, a lot of us categorize as a resi resilience planning, lah. Okay. Uh, and also supply chain resilience. We also need to ensure that our supply chain also um, uh, have little or no risk when it comes to climate risk. Not only whether it leads towards the greenhouse gas emissions, but also whether they are on the receiving end of a climate uh, uh, climate change. Scenario, uh, for example, if you're in plantation, uh, if there's a change in uh, if there's a change in terms of uh, 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 the climate because you know suddenly gets hot and uh, your your yield is no longer uh, as expected as uh, the previous years. So you need to also look at those considerations as well. So. Now, the question is, what would your organization need to do? So these are uh, some of the steps uh, that we've laid out. And these are usually the lesson that we give to some of our SMEs uh, on what to do when it comes to doing your climate action uh, sustainable plan. Uh, first, you need to educate, you need to aware, uh, uh, educate, as, uh, get some awareness, get some education, Learn as much as possible when it comes to sustainability. What are the what are the parameters out there? What are the standards out there? And then you need to get the buy-ins, especially like I said, to your stakeholders. Because if um, sometimes when it comes to um, when it affects your PNL, when affect when it affects your operations, it can be a very touchy subject. Number two, you need to set climate goals and objectives whether it's net carbon zero or whether it's net uh, or it's 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 carbon carbon neutral 
by when and do a, a, a framework towards measure uh, and you know set those targets whether it's 2030 or 2050 or 2025 uh, for, for, for your organizations. Um, measure and draft emissions reduction strategies, meaning that you have to start measuring now. Even before you start ac taking actions, uh, you know, changing your alternative power sources and whatsoever, you need to start measuring first before you do your actions. Uh, number four, start uh, and then you start adapting and resilience mitigation steps. Uh, number six, you once you have already done all your all your mitigation steps, you need to ensure that it continues, because there was a there was an SME who was blacklisted last year, thinking that what they did for that year alone was enough, uh, but not putting into process, not into putting into policy. Uh, uh, also lends you into a, the, the trouble because, you know, investors, uh, the, the external people who evaluate you, especially with, uh, with private equity investors, they need to see whether these changes are, you know, it's not just whims and fancy for the day. So we need to do, we need to ensure that it continues. So that's why it needs to be inside the policy and regulations. Um, looking at investing in green economy, whether putting some green economy elements into your company or investing outside into another company. Um, of course, collaborate locally and internationally because um, there's so much you can read, but a lot of it also, you know, uh, a lot you can also learn from other people out there on how they've also... Uh, um, you know, the face the same challenges and whatsoever. Now, this part, youth and millennial engagement is amazing. Uh, you'll be surprised how engaged uh, they are, especially if you empower them with, uh, you know, uh, climate action and also ESG and sustainability tasks. Um, they do a lot of research much faster than you are, especially much, much faster than I am at my age, and they are more succep susceptible. And also, they 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 learn to 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 they they learn much faster when it comes to this kind of topics because this topic comes close to their heart. This is kind of hip at this at this point. So, um, since they are passionate about it, empower them and get them to on board and, and let them, um, you know, sometimes we can learn from them as, 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 they, as, they, as they research the subject better than uh, most of our other colleagues. Uh, last but not least, as I said, monitor and report. Whatever that you do, you have to, uh, you have to monitor, measure, and also report at the end of the day. Do a reporting, let the world know. Because I have one SME who's been doing ESG for the, for the last four years, if I'm not mistaken. A very good rubber glove company who's done ESG. I mean, surprisingly, rubber glove has a nasty reputation out there. But then again, this rubber glove company has, you know, when, once you dive into their operations, they're quite ESG compliant. But the sad part is they never report. Nobody knows about them. So they went... So they fall into the same category as everybody else in the, in the glove com uh, manufacturing com uh, uh, category uh, with, with all the, the, the ill stories about uh, in, in the industry. So when you, do some, when you do all your sustainability journey, make sure that there's amplification out there. Make sure that your efforts are known to the world. All right? Now, this is the part where I told you about the, pr the biggest problem, um, especially with large organizations, public listed companies, for that matter. For you to go into scope three reporting, you need to make sure that all your scope threes, meaning that all your supply chain, these consist of small SMEs, huh, to also do greenhouse gas emissions reporting. They don't even know what ESG is. Right? Some of them think it's some engineering term. 
Some even think it's a type of dish. Alright? So, for, for them, for you, for them to know, for your, com- for your immediate supply chain to know and get about ESG and also do greenhouse gas emissions um, as a measurement, then they need to be educated. And this is the case that we brought to the government last year and we lobbied this, this project until, and, uh, and Alhamdulillah, in April, the government has already announced that this project was approved. So it's called Scheme Incentive Kelestarian. Now what this means is basically we are trying to train as many SMEs as possible, especially SMEs who are along the supply chains of GLCs and MNCs to ensure that they, um, they are on board this ESG journey. And when we do that, that takes the, 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 um, the load off from a lot of uh, public listed companies, MNCs, GLCs, when it comes to dealing with suppliers in Malaysia. So if you have your uh, um, cameras, you can take a picture of this QR code. Um, you can send this to all of your um, um, you know, supply chain uh, companies, companies under your supply chain, your vendors, the companies that you work with, and uh, get them to, to apply to, to sign up for this course. So what this means is basically, we, this, is a, this is a three-phase journey, uh, where in the first phase, because we, are, we understand not a lot of your vendors know what ESG is, and they are ready for this ESG journey or the sustainability journey, especially when it comes to greenhouse gas emission. So we give them the 101 or the introduction on the, the, the ESG part. It's a one-day course uh, that's, uh, that's done by uh, United Nations Global Compact. Uh, so our courses are run by United Nations Global Co- Compact as well, and it's uh, and also signed by United Nations Global Compact. Um, and then in f- once we, you, you run through that one, one, one day course, we will determine uh, from there, we will shortlist companies who are ready for the journey, going moving forward. And then from there, we'll pick up 330 to go into phase two. Now, phase two is a much intense workshop that takes about three months, but not the entire whole of three months. That means we, we take one, uh, you know, a, a few hours each month for the next for the next three months. So there, we will teach and handhold companies, especially your SMEs under your companies, on how um, to practice ESG because now they are a little bit one step further towards understanding how ESG is done. Uh, we teach them uh, about the the. Uh, you know, um, doing some gap assessments on how, what, what needs to be done. Uh, we even teach them on scope one and scope two carbon accounting to the point that you can do scope one and scope two accounting using Excel or a piece of paper. Okay? So, um, because there's a lot of softwares out there, no doubt. Uh, a lot of apps out there. But you need to understand the the how it's calculated, so that you know what to do, okay? Then you, you choose whichever software or apps that, that's out there, okay? So from there, uh, we, t- we teach them carbon accounting, we teach them about DEI, uh, uh, and also BHR assessment, and we do some coaching to ensure that at the end of this journey, you'll come up with a sustainability action plan. Now what that means is basically, number one, you need to do A, you need to do B, you need to do C, you need to do D. You have a list of things to do. All right? And e- only after that, then one... Now, this is the kicker. At the end of the, at the, end of the exercise, we'll shortlist 150 companies that the government will be able to give a grant of 40,000 ringgit to do your A, B, C, and D listed in your exercise to ensure that they transition. 40,000 ringgit each company, okay? And if that's not enough, we have our low carbon transition facility. That's basically 
uh, financing for your companies up to 10 million ringgit for a tenure of 10 years. Okay? And in case you need for your operations, especially for your government, uh, for your, your uh, uh, especially if you're a, a, a MNC or you're a, 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 a large uh, listed company, a public listed company, we also have a certified green procurement professional uh, certi uh, certified training, meaning especially for your procurement officer to get a certified green procurement officer status. So um, there are a number of options here. One is uh, over here on, the on your left is more towards just an awareness. But if you want plan to get your officer certified, uh, there's also um, you know, options for you to do for users, for purchasers, for planners and managers. And this is uh, recognized by our um, Ministry of Human Resources. Jabatan Pembangunan Kemahiran of the Ministry of Human Resources, MOHR. So these are the levels that's for and how many days it takes for certified uh, green procurement officer. And I guess I, it's almost uh, hit about just about time. So I open the floor for any question. We have another five minutes, I think. Right? Uh, when you mentioned there, at the end, there's incentive like 40,000 ringgit or so. Is that limited to specific type of industries? At this, at this time, we prioritize, number one, companies who, are, who export and who are also related to export. Number two, companies who serve GLCs and MNC, meaning that they, they also supply to GLCs and MNC. These are our top two priorities. Number three, uh, companies who are related to services, professional services. The reason for this is basically uh, for a lot of SMEs, uh, manufacturing um, companies are usually have this 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 uh, this compression, meaning that they only have serve one customer, one parts to one customer. But for professional services, they serve uh, one small company can serve to you know ten twenty com customers sometimes. So that's why, uh, and then we go into manufacturing, we go into uh, so it's it's. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a tier from there. Lah. But the priority is basically for companies who are, um, who are related to, ex who, who export and also related to export. And then it goes into MNC and GLC. Any other questions? Forty thousand grant means you don't have to pay back. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry, sorry, one question. Yes. Uh, to qualify for that forty k, must it go through your training that you mentioned? Yes. Or must go through. Yeah. Uh, and that whole thing is sorry. How many days is it? If you total it up, um, one day of the first phase, three days of the, the, the second phase, at least three to four days of the second, second phase. And do we pay for the training? Zero. Zero. You don't have to pay anything. This is a government's incentive. That three days is across, three to four days is across three months. So, uh, and that three months basically means that it's, it's going to be, it's, it's in terms of coaching, meaning that it's not training, it's coaching, meaning that they'll come and first you, there's a workshop, especially in the, uh, in the first month, there's a workshop 
and then that we will will come visit or contact you on the following month uh, to ask you how you progress and especially uh, you know uh, track you especially on your sustainability action plan that you've we've, we've helped you draft uh, in the first month right any other questions If there are no more questions, I am glad that we keep up to time and thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much.